Hi everyone, so in this video today, I am gonna remake Hollow Knight in Godot 4.4 Beta 3, <laughs> that's the version I'm using, uh, and I'm gonna make around like 15 to 20 videos about how to remake Hollow Knight. We're gonna take a look at how we can remake the movement, how we can remake the specific mechanic, how we can remake potentially enemies, those kind of things, and it's gonna be a good, a good series for like starting to learn Godot 4.4, getting accustomed to the new, to the new, uh, to the new thing that there is in Godot 4.4. This series is made possible by all the people that are buying my courses on Udemy, so thanks to all of you uh, that uh, helps me to make those type of, uh, of uh, video here. Recently I released a 2D isometry course in Godot 4.3 uh, and I also have my procedurally generated roguelite and some other course, I will link them in the description. You can find the asset that I'm using for this specific series uh, in the description, it's on my itch.io, that's my own uh, pixel art type stuff that I'm remaking, uh, and that's gonna be it. So let's get started. So I am going to use Godot 4.4 Beta 3 that's just been released today. Uh, so I've already downloaded, but like you can just come here and you can just pick up here by clicking on the, the download section and you pick up the one that you need. So then after that, what we're going to do is like me, I'm going to just create a new project. Uh, that project, I'm going to call it Godot underscore night underscore G. 4.4, uh, go to 4.4, uh, so, and I'm gonna put it into my folder, my habitual folder, go to 4 games, that is right here, I'm gonna put it right there. So it's gonna be cool, I'm gonna click for the renderer, I'm gonna take forward plus, it's gonna be fine, and I am gonna be good. make sure that you have created folder, that's cool, created. Voilà, go to open. That's it, voilà. So for me, all the asset is in my asset folder. So here, I just take that and I grab it and I'm just gonna drag into it, into my uh, race folder right here. It will import everything. And so like this, we have everything set up. So what I wanna do first is I want to make my player. So for that, I'm gonna click here on the plus, take a look for a character body 2D, and then that character body 2D, I'm gonna rename it player. And I'm gonna attach two things. I'm gonna attach a sprite 2D. And I'm gonna attach a collision shape, collision shape 2D as well. The collision shape gonna be for a rectangle. And I'm gonna also attach to the player an animation player. Every time I'm making a little video like that, a lot of people ask me why I am not using animated sprite. I'm not using animated sprite because very often I have some issue with animated sprite that stop me to do the things the way I want it. I prefer on average to have sprite, a sprite 2D where I have all my animation and I can just divide it with like the animation player. I can use the animation player to do a lot of things. For me, that's way better. But also keep in mind that me, I'm coming from C++ and Python. <laughs> so like I'm, I was used before to use Godot or Unity to uh, create my own game engine uh, of sort so like uh, that's always easier when you're creating your own game engine to have everything on the sprite sheet that's a bit of my professional formation if you if you if uh, that makes sense so here we're gonna get the sprite 2d so the sprite 2d is gonna be uh, in my player sprite and i'm gonna use this one player hollow knight i'm gonna click on my sprite 2d here i'm gonna drag that player sprite here into empty and so here you can see that the uh, uh, the sprite sheet is a bit blurry, so for that we can go to project, project setting, we can go to renderer normally, rendering, and then texture, and here default texture filter, I'm changing from linear to nearest, which is going to make the pixel art crisp. Uh, then after that I need to uh, change also the, the, um, the size of uh, the, the sprite sheet, I just want to display one frame, so I need to count that, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, on the um, horizontal axis, so I need to go to animation, H frame, put 8, and after that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here V frame, I put it at 7. Voila. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create the animation. So I'm going to create uh, 4 animations. So I'm going to create the idle. I'm going to create animation, new, move, then animation, new, jump, then animation, new, Fall. I forgot to do one thing, which is also very annoying. If someone knows how to fix that in Godot, please tell me in the comment. Here, uh, in since Godot 4.3, they have changed the stuff here, like the nearest FPS 30 per second, which uh, is annoying because I have to retap 0.1 every time. Can I change that somewhere? I don't know. I haven't found it. So maybe it's like um, it's like hidden somewhere that I don't know. So if you know, please tell me. Uh, uh, that will be very appreciated. So here I'm just going to my animation and I just put that at dot one. 
So this is good, that one. And I'm going to also take that. Uh, so I'm going to go to idle and I'm going to go to my sprite. So here my sprite is on the, the, the frame zero. So I'm just going to go here with my sprite selected here. I'm going to go to my frame and I'm going to use that key. I'm just going to create a reset track, create, and I'm just going to drag that to make the timeline a little bit bigger. And so here one, then I need to go back here to the two and then I put it on two. Voila, so here I stop at dot five, so I put dot five here, put on loop, and so now we're good. Okay, so that's one thing. So now we're gonna make the move. So I'm gonna move to the sixth frame, five, fifth frame, so here, create. And this one normally is around one second if I remember well. Voila, so that's good. So let's see. Yeah, that's good. So now we're gonna make the jump. The jump is just one frame, so it's going to be easy. Uh, it's like, which one is this? It's this one normally, 15, up. I'm going to put it at dot one, not put it on loop. And here I'm going to do fall, uh, 16. Here I'm going to put dot one, not put it on loop. So now normally we should be good. So I've put the move uh, on loop. I put the idle on loop, but all the other animation, fall and jump, I didn't put them on loop because I don't want it. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to uh, create the code. So I'm going to click on my player and I'm going to attach a script to it by clicking that little icon. I'm going to uh, go here on the folder and I'm going to go to my player. And here inside my player folder, I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call script. Voici. Alors, up, put it here. And on this one, I'm going to name it player controller. Click on open. I'm putting the uh, template on empty. Normally, if you use Godot for the first time, you have it probably on basic, basic movement, but I don't use that. I prefer to create my own logic. So I put it on empty, so I guess it doesn't create any uh, function. So I click on create. And so now we're good to go. So now here, what we need to do is we need to create our first variable. So uh, here, I'm going to create a variable that I want to um, be able to change into the inspector. So for that, what, uh, what you need to do is you need to tap at export. So like this is going to export it into the inspector var and that the first variable I'm going to call it move speed and I'm going to set it to be a float of 120. And so now you can see that my move speed is right there. So what I want to do uh, too is I want to uh, create another variable, this time not a, 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 an export one. That variable I'm going to call it movement and I'm going to set it to be equal to a vector 2 with no value in it. So 0, 0 per default. Now that I've done that, I'm going to create a first function by typing func, and that function I'm going to call it horizontal movement. Uh, I put the colon, and so here now I need to take my movement uh, movement variable here, and I'm going to assign the uh, input. So for that, I'm going to say input dot get underscore axis, and here between parentheses, I'm going to take ui underscore left, and then I'm going to put a comma ui underscore right. And so like this, I will um, set now the input to that variable movement. Now that I've done that, I can make an if statement. And in that if statement, I'm going to check if we are pressing a key, we are moving. And if we are not pressing a key, we are not moving. So here I'm going to say if movement. So it means that because I'm not saying it's false, it's auto it automatically is considered as true. I'm going to say that my velocity.x, which is a built-in function that is existing in our character body 2D, I'm going to set it to be equal to movement time move speed like this that's it and uh, else so if we're not moving what i can do is i can say uh, velocity dot x and here i can make a sort of little uh, linear interpolation so for that i'm going to use a, a built-in function it's called move toward in uh, in godot uh, and globally i'm going to interpolate between the value that i'm in and the value i want to get to so the value that i'm in is the movement where that i, that I was pressing so for example I, I was pressing the right key and i was moving 120 pixels uh, to the right and so i want to pass from that moment to uh, zero but i want to have a sort of little little uh a curve where it can decelerate uh, nicely so it doesn't just like stop quickly so for that what you do is like you get your velocity dot x then you get the value you want to get to so for me here it's zero and then here what we can do is we can create uh, another uh, variable so that variable i'm going to put it here i'm going to type it uh, i'm, I'm going to make it as an export i'm going to call var and i'm going to call it deceleration and how much i've put it into my test project let me check 
I've put it at 0 0.1. Okay, so I'm just gonna come back here. So I'm gonna say that it is equal to 0 0.1. And so here what I can say is I can get my um, uh, move speed and I can multiply it by my deceleration. Deceleration, like that. So now we have the basic for moving our player. So now what we can do is like, I can say funk, uh, and I can call a, a function that is built in Godot, it's called physics process delta, and I can call my horizontal movement into it. And what I can do is I can also call another function that is called move and slide, it's built in Godot, that allows body to be able to slide on the surface. So now we're good, I can save my player, so for that I'm going to just go to my player here, and I'm going to create a new uh, folder that I'm going to call it scene, and I'm going to save my player scene right here. And now what I want to do is I want to create uh, a little level. So for that, I'm going to click on the plus here. I'm going to click on the 2D scene. And that I'm going to call it level underscore one. And I'm going to click on that chain icon to bring my player there. So I click on the player. And then here, I'm going to also look for another node that is camera 2D. I'm going to click on create. I'll go back to my 2D view so this I can see where my player is, uh, what my scene is. And so the camera 2D is a bit too big. You can see that that's, that's purple rectangle uh, around. So this we can move it by uh, increasing the size. So uh, like this nice looks a little bit better. I can save and that scene, that level scene, I'm going to uh, put it into its own folder. So I'm going to go here at the res, uh, at the root folder. I'm going to create a new uh, folder that's going to be called level. And here I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call scene, so like this, everything is nice and tidy. And I can click save here. So now, globally, we can click on play. And by clicking that play button here, we're going to launch the entire project. So here, I'm going to click here, it's going to ask me to select current. Now we have the new window of, uh, of Godot, as you can see, and that new window now is helping to, uh, to have some specific things. And now I can move my player to the horizontal movement, as you can see. So that's perfect. That's cool. But now what we need to do is we need uh, two things. We need to animate the player and we need to flip it uh, according to the direction we want to go to. So let's go back to the script. So for that, I can come back here. So what I want to do first is I want to create a function for the animation. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that function set animations. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an if statement. I'm going to say if velocity.x is not equal to zero, then I'm going to access my player uh, animation player right here. I'm going to rename that animation player anim. And here what I can do is I can tap dollar sign anim dot play and here I can look for my move. And what I can do is I can say, if velocity.x is equal to zero, then what I can do is I can set that anim.play to be idle. Voila. So now I can just grab my set animation. I can put it under my uh, horizontal movement. And so now let's have a look. Now you can see I am animated. So now we need to flip the player. So that's cool. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function and I'm going to call it flip. I'm going to call it flip instead of set flip. In that function, what we need to do is like in Godot, we have different ways to flip uh, flip things. So if you're completely brand new to Godot, you go to Sprite 2D. I'm going to put myself in the 2D viewport. If you go to Sprite 2D, you go to here to offset, you have flip edge. And for example, you can turn that value on and you can do that through uh, the inspector. You can over on flip edge to have the name of the property. So here it's flip underscore edge. And you can access that and toggle that through code. Uh, this is very fine. Uh, the only problem is like because we're going to use a sword uh, later on, uh, when we go, if we are using that, we need to, after that, hard code the, um, the fact that the sword is flipping. Otherwise, the character is going to flip to the left and the sword will be to the right. So that's not automatically a good thing. So what we can do, instead of using that, we can go to transform and we can use this. I can unchain this for a second. And here you can see I am at 1.0. Uh, and if I put minus 1, it flipped my player to the left. So I can access that. So for that, what I can do, I'm just putting the value to the normal one. Voila. For that, what I can do is I can come here to func flip and I can access that through code. So the thing that I can do here is I can say if velocity.x is uh, greater than 0.0, .0 then what I can say, it means what we go to the right. So uh, here, uh, what I can say is I can take my scale.x. That's how you access the scale here. And here, I just want to only use the scale.x. I can set it to scale.y times 1. 
that's a little trick that I found in Godot that was like uh, working very well. I don't know really why, <laughs> but that works better this way, so that's cool. And so if we can do the same for like the, when we go to the left, if velocity dot x is this time smaller or uh, smaller than 0, 0, then what we can do is we can uh, say that uh, scale dot x scale dot x is equal to scale dot y times minus 1. And so now we can also take that flip function, we can put it here, and so now we're going to be able to flip. You can see now we are flipping, we are moving, we are going in all directions. Perfect. So now what we need to do, I just want to show you one thing, is like uh, when we are launching the game, you can see that the game is still like going uh, on a window like this, but you can also click on those three little buttons here, and here you have Make Game work Workspace Floating on Next Play. So this is what's going on right now, the, the, the workspace is floating, but you can also untick that, and you can close. And when you're going to relaunch it, it's going to be docked into uh, the viewport. Me personally, I prefer it like this, so I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, but that's, uh, that's up to you. So now what we need to do uh, before to close this, uh, this uh, first video is like we go to level one. And here I just want to create a simple floor. So for that, I'm going to create a static body 2D. A static body 2D, I'm going to call it temporary floor. Temporary floor, and I'm going to put an underscore because I like to put underscore everywhere. Uh, and here I'm going to uh, tap a collision shape, uh, and I'm going to also assign a color rect, color rect, just for because we're going to make um, a tile map after that, so that's, there's no point to make big stuff here. So that color rect, I'm going to put it something like this. Voilà. I'm going to move it here, and I'm just going to drag it down like that i'm going to change the color here i'm going to put full black like this and the collision shape i'm going to uh, put it as well so i'm going to move it the collision shape i'm going to move it here i'm going to put that on new rectangle shape as well and i'm going to come here i'm going to just make sure that the color rect is displayed uh, under the collision shape it's easier for me to set up i can do something like this voilà. I can do something like that. I can toggle also actually the grid. That will be easier for me. I think this one I don't need to do it, but this one's gonna be better. Voila. And so up, I can do something like this. I can come back here. I can do something like this. So now I'm doing that just because I want to the player to uh, have a gravity. So now I can create gravity. So here I'm gonna create a new export uh, at export var and i'm gonna call it gravity and i think i've told uh, i've put it at 500 in my test project yeah 500 that's cool so from here 500 that's zero and so now what we need to do is we just need to get our uh, gravity so for that at, at the beginning of my physics process i tap velocity.y which is like the, the velocity of the vertical axis plus equal gravity time delta and here I'm multiplying the gravity times the delta because I want to, to make it frame rate independent. So here now, my player is falling and I just need also to <laughs> readjust the player collision shape. Voilà, because the player collision shape is right here, but the, 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 the stuff is here. So what I can do is I can actually take my sprite 2D and I can move it slightly where my collision shape is, something like this. I'm just going to put myself back on idle voila and i'm gonna just resize my collision shape here i'm gonna just resize the side a little bit and i think i'm gonna leave it something like this that's gonna be fine so voila and so now but we have the basic for like the player movement so now in the next video what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the jump with a variable variable jump like we have in hollow knight like the, the the longer you press the higher you jump uh we're gonna also set the animation and we're gonna do a lot of other stuff little by little in this series so that's it for me so i hope this video has been helpful for you if it's the case don't hesitate to uh, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i uh, mean i want to thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye